Hey guys, welcome to level 2 algebra skills. We're going to be looking at powers combined. I know it sounds pretty awesome, but uh, it's just dealing with thirds and negative powers and so on. So generally with um, level 2 algebra, what they ask you is to write um, the final answer with positive uh, powers or even getting rid of uh, the thirds and actually putting it in an index form. So with the first question here, what I need to realize is that I've got um, to the power of negative half. So a little trick that I'm going to show you guys is this. If you want to get rid of that negative really quickly, what you can do is you can actually flip whatever's inside the bracket as upside down. So what I mean by that is remember that 16x to the power of 8 can actually be uh, written as a fraction where it's actually divided by 1. So that means I can rewrite this as 1 over 16x to the power of 8 to the power of half. Notice I've actually gotten uh, rid of the negative. But what I've done is I've actually flipped uh, whatever's inside the bracket. Um, that's yeah, that's basically it. What you got to do. So the next step is uh, remember that one has a power of one. Sixteen has a power of one as well, which means when we have it raised to the power of half, we are going to get one to the power of one times half over sixteen to the power of half, and then x to the power of eight times half. So I said sixteen to the power of half because remember that it's one times a half. So 1 to the power of um, 1 times half is just 1, so I'm just going to get 1 at the top. 16 to the power of half is the same thing as saying square root of 16, which equals to 4. And then I'm going to get 8 times half, which equals to 4. So the final answer for question A is going to be 1 over 4x to the power of 4. So if we were to follow that same kind of idea, in the second question, what we're going to do is we're going to rewrite this as 8x to the power of 6 divided by x to the power of 12. And that's now raised to the power of positive third. So now remember that 8 has a, also a power of 1. So I'm going to write this as 8 to the power of 1 times a third, x to the power of 6 times a third, and the whole thing over x to the power of 12 times a third. Now 8 to the power of um, 1 times 1 over 3 is just 8 to the power of third. Now if you're not good with those numbers, then always remember you can actually go to your calculator and just use that so 8 to the power of 1 third but make sure you put the brackets around the 1 third because otherwise what you're going to get is something like this and that's actually the not right answer so 2.67 is not the correct answer the correct answer for this question is actually 2 so 8 to the power of third is 2 and then we're going to get x to the power of 6 times a third is squared divided by 12 times a third is 4 now we've got to simplify this further because we've got x squared and x to the power of 4, which means this could be written as 2 to the power, well, 2 times x to the power of 2 minus 4. I'm just doing this a bit of extra way, but if you guys are comfortable going directly to that final answer, then you can do that as well. So this would equal 2, to the, uh, two times x to the power of negative 2, which of course can be written as 2x squared. So what I mean by that is that if you're comfortable going from here to here directly, then by all means you can do that. So you don't need to actually um, do all this extra bit of working. All right, let's go to question C. So question C, what we have is a square root symbol, and then we've got this um, entire ugly looking fraction there. Now, what you could also do is in some cases, you can actually work whatever's inside the square root, or in, even in question B, what you could have actually done is you could have actually simplified the x12 and x6 first before you got started. Um, and, I, and that's what I'm going to do in this case. So in this case, I'm not going to take the square root symbol straight away. So I'm going to leave the square root symbol as it is, but I'm going to bring x to the power of negative 4 to the numerator. So it actually becomes x to the power of 10 minus minus 4, and then you've got y to the power of 4. So this now uh, simplifies to 16 x to the power of 10 minus 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 negative 4 is 14 and then I'm going to get y to the power of 4. So at this point remember that 16 has got a power of 1 so and because we're dealing with square root we can rewrite this as 16 to the power of 1 x to the power of 14 y to the power of 4 and all of this is raised to the power of half because of that square root symbol. Now we multiply the powers so we're going to get 16 to the power of 1 times a half x to the power of 14 times a half, and y to the power of 4 times half. Now 16 to the power of half, that's square root of 16, which equals to 4. 
and then x to the power of 14 times half, which is 7, 4 times half for y, you're going to get 2. So that ends up being the final answer for question C. So as you can see, it's just another way of doing it. You could have done it exactly like with B. Um, what I mean by that is you could have actually gone from there and did this, where you write it up as uh, 16x to the power of 10, y to the power of 4, over x to the power of negative negative 4, and the whole thing raised to the power of half. That's just another way of doing it as well. Okay, so as long as you get to that final answer, that's all that matters. So it doesn't really matter which method you choose. All right, so finally we have question D. So in question D, I uh, just want to extend this a bit. In question D, the square root symbol actually extends all the way, all right? So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of the negative one-third. So to get rid of the negative one-third, what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip that um, fraction inside out. And I'm going to get x to the power of 15, y to the power of 18, divided by 27. And that's now raised to the power of a third. So a couple of ways of doing this. So what you could actually do is you could actually get rid of the third first and then deal with the square root. Or the other way you could do this is you could have actually done it like this as well. So you could go x to the power of 15, y to the power of 18, divided by 27. Now that's actually raised to the power of third. Um, in fact, you could have done it as this whole thing to the power of half. But what we're going to do is, um, rather than mess around like this, I'm, I'm just going to deal with the, I'm, I'm, I'm going to sort out this thing first before I actually take it to the power of half. All right, so I want to actually work out whatever's in the yellow. So to do that, I've got, remember that 27 has a power of 1. So I've got x to the power of 15 times a third, y to the power of 18 times a third, divided by uh, 27 to the power of 1 times a third. And of course, remember that this is whole thing is actually raised to the power of half. Now, I think I actually chose some really silly numbers here. So this question might not work out as pretty. But just understand that in your exams, they generally tend to give you some nice numbers to work with. What I mean by that is I'll show you guys when I finish the question. So you got x to the power of 15 times a third, which is x to the power of 5. And then y to the power of 18 times a third, which is 6. 27 to the power of third is just 3. Um, and of course, all of this is now raised to the power of half. So we got to do this step one more time. Remember that 3 has a power of 1. So we're going to get x to the power of 5 times a half, y to the power of 6 times a half, and 3 to the power of 1 times a half. So we're going to get x to the power of 2.5. So I could just leave it as 5 over 2. Uh, y is 6 times a half, which is 3. And then I'm going to get 3 to the power of, of half in the denominator. As I told you guys, I, I picked some really stupid numbers. <laughs> I didn't realize they were going to kind of be so messy. But if, and I guess this is all you can do with this because this is actually leaving the answers in a positive index. Now, in some cases, you might actually see the answers being done a bit one more step, which is where, might, where they might actually write it like this. Because it's 5 over 2, so they might actually say where that 2 is there, uh, square root of um, x to the power of 5 multiplied by y to the power of 3, and then that's actually divided by square root of 3. It's just another way. But I think. I don't think they'll give you a question where you're going to end up with square roots at the end, especially at level 2 algebra. Okay, guys, don't forget to like this video and share this video, and also subscribe to keep up with uh, when the, no um, the new content comes through and also when the live tutorials are on. Also, there should be some playlists popping up here for you guys to have a look at. Cool. Thank you for watching.